Know what I mean? Ain't no opportunity, ain't no till you gonna have to come physically take this right, crown. Right. You know what this mean, right? It's on us. We got next. What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, Mark Dark, and I'm back with another video. If you're new, if you love Wu-Tang, go ahead, hit that subscribe button. Like the video and leave your theories, comments, everything down below. Now today we're going to be talking about Wu-Tang, an American Saga, Season 3, Episode 5. This is the recap. Now I'm going to try my best to focus on all the key points in this episode. If I miss anything, you guys let me know down below. Now this episode, we finally got to see what happened to you, God, and his son. We also followed the journeys of Killer and Inspector Deck. And I think those storylines were solid, you know what I'm saying? Especially your boy, you God, he was going through it. I did see some of you guys in my last recap mentioned that his son was going to be all right and that he was shot in the kidney and also he was shot in the hand. Um, I looked up the story and it was crazy. They said it was like a shootout and then the person that was the target of the shootout picked his son up as a shield and that's how he ended up getting shot in the hand and the kidney or whatever. I mean, that's just flat out messed up. I mean, this boy was only two years old when this happened. So mentally, I know you guy was messed up. I mean, anybody would to see their child go through something like that. I mean, that was just flat out crazy. Now, let's go over the description of the episode. The title of the episode is called A Better Tomorrow. The description of the episode reads, Following the completion of the tour, we see the past of a few lesser known Wu-Tang members as they search for their individual voices amongst the crowd. So those are the key elements of this episode. As I told y'all, it was an interesting episode to see what you got, Killer, and Inspector Depp was going through after this tour was done. So let's begin. What did we see in episode five? It starts out with you got. He's at the hospital. He's pissed off. His son is being operated on and it ain't looking too good. You know what I'm saying? It's just not looking too good. And you can tell this is really getting to him. And you got, he just wants to know who did this. On top of that, he has to strap on him because he's ready to get revenge. He is ready to go ahead and settle this. Now, he runs into his baby's mom. She is there, and he asks her, like, okay, where were you at? What was going on with our son? And she tells him, like, look, where were you at? Like, you weren't even here, so don't blame me for nothing. She tells him that their son was being watched by Sierra. So you guy, he goes over there. Sierra's dad answers the door. He's like, look, she ain't really trying to be, you know, bothered right now. She's going through a lot. You guys ain't trying to hear any of that. He is trying to find out what happened, who did this, and he hits him. I mean, he's like, look, get up out my way. And after he hits him, he goes to the back room and he can see Sierra. She's crying, talking about it's not her fault. She tells him they was just outside having a good time, like, you know, everyday stuff. All of a sudden, two guys start arguing, and then the argument turned into a shootout. The next thing she knows... His son ends up getting shot and she does tell him that the guy she believed that was involved was a, a guy named Shadi or whatever. So you guy goes to his homeboy, gets intel on this Shadi character and he says his homeboy Carlos knows exactly where he's going to be. So they end up setting it up. All of a sudden we see the phone call being made. Carlos gives them the intel that, hey, your boy Shadi is here. So you got now he has to make a choice. Does he want to seek revenge? Does he actually want to take this guy's life, mess around and get locked up? Or does he want to just let it go? We know they cut it off after we see him with the strap about to make his move. And then we get to a Spectre Dex story, which we see a super fan. He's ready. I mean, they're outside and he's like, look, man, I've been waiting for your album. I mean, when is it going to drop? And now a Spectre is like, man, you're right. Like, I need to get my album out. But it seems like everybody else they getting all the praise. Other people's albums are coming out. So we know a Spectre, he really wants to put in that work. They end up finding out about the whole Tales from the Hood uh, movie soundtrack. And it seems like a Spectre deck is the only one that's truly inspired to do this work. He wants to get out some new music. But it seems like everybody else, they want to do their own thing and focus on what they want to do. But we know a Spectre, he was going to put in that work. He was going to take this chance and make something big of it. Now, we get to his chick, Alicia, and he ended up clapping those cheeks. He's back in the hood. Everybody's showing him love. She showed him a lot of love, and he's telling her he wants to put out some music and all this stuff. He's inspired, but she's telling him, like, look, you are not a soldier. You know what I'm saying? You are a general. If you want to put out some new music, if you want to, you know, get out there and take your stuff to the next level, you got to teach yourself. You got to go in there and do what you got to do. And that's exactly what he does. He goes to the studio. And as you can see, Bobby, he's put don't touch all over the equipment. And Spectre's like, screw all that. 
I got to take my chances. I got to do what I got to do to make this work. We know he was telling his girl that Bobby does all the music and all that stuff. So he pretty much just waits until he gets the beats. But this time he did not need Bobby. He did exactly what he needed to do. And sometimes you got to do that. You can't sit back and wait for other people to do things for you. Sometimes you got to just take your opportunity and run with it. Then we get to your boy Killer's story. And of course, Ray is telling him like, look, you know, the whole thing about splitting the money ain't that big of a deal. He just wants him to know if he wants to be a part of this group, be a part of the group. Put in that work, make some music, and do what you got to do. And you can tell this kind of motivated Killer throughout the episode because that's all he can really think about. But we can also tell that he didn't want his peoples to know what he was really doing as far as the whole music thing. He gets in the cab. He's having a conversation with the cab driver. And we know his uncle's in the cab business. And they was talking about retirement. And his guy was talking about how he's about to get 200000 when it's all said and done. And now Killer's like, man, maybe it is, you know, opportunity for me in the cab business with my family. But then again, he loves music. So he goes to the barbershop. The guy at the barbershop that's cutting his hair, he doesn't even know that Killer does music. Doesn't even know his rap name is Killer until Power walks in. They call him Jamal, which is his real name. And then we know Power was talking about Wu Wear and how Killer just got off the tour with Wu-Tang. And we know he was in Virginia. He was telling, oh boy, he just left Virginia. And I believe he said he was there because of family. But we know why he was really there. Now, the young guy right here, he was pissed off that he had to go and unclog the toilet. He's like, look, man, I ain't about to be in there cleaning up. So he walks out. Killer goes outside and he approaches him, tells him, like, why did you even join the nation in the first place? Telling him, like, look, you got a lot of power, but if you don't got a solid ground to stand on, you're not going to never even notice the full potential of that power. And tells him to keep his head up, go back in there, and if you act like you belong, then you belong. So he's just giving him motivation. And the same advice that he's giving this kid, it's the same advice Killer's going to use for himself through this episode now his uncle pulls up on him and he wants to have a conversation about what he's been doing of course the whole taxi business but killer ain't really trying to talk to him he goes home he's having a conversation with his mom she's talking about how all the other family members they're doing real good in music and all that stuff and you know this conversation really got to him because he's like man i can do music too i got that same type of talent but his family does not see it that way they don't even know that he can rap and that he's real good at music then we get back to you guys. We get the conclusion of his story. His son is okay. He was about to take old boy's life, but the conversation that he had with his son, it changed everything. You know what I'm saying? Even learning about that his son was okay, it helped him get through all of this. And he felt like, man, it's probably not even worth it to go out there and seek revenge because I'm going to mess my life up. And this is what Power was telling him at the end of episode four. He was telling him that that street stuff it's going to mess you up, man. You got to, you know, look at the bigger picture and focus on your future. And that's exactly what you got end up doing. Now we get to the conclusion of Inspector Dex's story. Bobby and Divine, they listen to the song, the beat that he made and they loving it. You know what I'm saying? At first, you can tell that Bobby was like, what, what were you doing in the studio using my stuff without my permission? And then, you know, once they heard the song, it was like, nah, it go hard. You know what I'm saying? It's fire. So this will be on the Tales from the Crypt soundtrack. And he had the opportunity to take the full advantage of the song but he told divine like look this making a wu-tang hit or whatever you know what i'm saying you ain't just gotta put my name on it he wanted to be a group project which goes to show you that he really cared for his brothers and he wants everybody to be a unit to be one now we get back to killer storyline he's having a conversation with his uncle they're talking about the cat business and the retirement how much money you can make in the music and of course, his uncle was like, man, I knew you wasn't going to be good at music since you was a little boy. But once he told him he had a song with Wu-Tang and he told him the song that he was in, which was chess boxing, his uncle was like, man, really? Like, that's my favorite song. And he pulls out the tape. I'm looking like, man, uncle, a true OG, triple OG. He went inside, got a Wu wear hat. I mean, he was having a good time. And it goes to show you that Killer opening it up, let his family know the truth about who he really is and what he really likes. It paid off and it seems like a specter deck you got and killer they made the right moves this episode and now they're more motivated to go out there and put in that work to make sure they can make this group even better and also just improve on what they've been doing and i'm glad we got to see an episode like this now at the end of the episode we see your boy ray and of course ghostface they're outside of Wu where they keep hearing biggie's one more chance remix they pissed off that people are even playing other music Cherie, she pulls up. She playing that Biggie as well. She's like, man, this is my favorite song right now. And I 
ain't trying to keep hearing Wu-Tang all the time. I want to listen to different stuff. They pissed off, and I think they ended up saying that the song was number one for like seven days straight, and it just came out. So you already know Ghostface and Ray, they was upset about that. They're like, man, like how did that even happen that quick? They want to get new music out. Ray is talking about like, look, it's our time. You know what I'm saying? We got to step up, and I believe in the next episode, we're going to see these two put in that work, and we're going to see the inspiration of Ray's first solo album. We know it's going to be like another type of movie episode that we saw with ODB earlier on in the season. So now we're going to get his movie episode. Y'all let me know what y'all think about this. Do y'all believe that this next episode is going to be solid because it will be similar to the ODB episode, but we're going to see it in Ray's perspective. And also let me know what y'all think about this episode. I thought it was a solid episode. I cannot wait to see what's next. I know the description of episode six states that we're going to see this through the lens of a 90s gangster cinema. So I definitely can't wait to see how they're going to put it all together. You guys let me know what you think. I will continue to drop more Wu-Tang content in the future. But I want to thank you guys once again for all the love, all the support. And I will catch y'all on the next one. But let me get up on out of here, man. It's your boy Mark Dark. I'm out. Peace.